In the last webcast, we learned that dehydratase enzymes catalyze the elimination of water from these beta hydroxy thioesters by removing the pro S hydrogen in the hydroxy group to give the trans double bond geometry. And we concluded that that was a process that involved a syn elimination pathway, which enabled us to rule out the E2 mechanism. That leaves the E1CB mechanism as the most viable mechanism. And indeed, in this webcast, what we're going to look at is the process by which this enzyme, dehydratase, catalyzes the elimination through the E1CB mechanism. We'll also look at how a suicide inhibitor, that's an irreversible inhibitor, uses the same mechanism to fool the enzyme and eventually block it from further catalytic activity. In the active site, the, there's a histidine 70, which performs the function of a base. There's also an unknown enzyme that serves as an acid in a general acid, general base catalyzed process. And so the elimination of that HS hydrogen involves the deprotonation. Again, we'll use the sp2 nitrogen of our imidazole ring of histidine 70. That's going to put the histidine ring in its protonated form. We'll have the enol geometry of this thioester, and then the um, mystery side chain is going to be in its deprotonated or ionized form. This ionized functional group is going to turn around and be used as a base to eliminate the elements of water. The elements of water will be lost because as that leaving group leaves, it will pick up a proton from the uh, imidazole ring that's now in its ionized form. That's the electron flow associated with that process. Water is lost. The side chains are going to be returned. The imidazole ring to its neutral form and this acid to its, uh, to its uh, protonated form. Along the way, we've left the HR, made the trans double bond, and the imidazole ring is back to its neutral state. This resembles the E1CB elimination mechanism where we've made uh, a deprotonation reaction at first. We actually um, did that in this case by not making the um, enolate anion, but instead we made this enol kind of derivative here. Let's take a look at this substrate analog, which is basically meaning that it's going to fool the enzyme and bind in the enzyme active site. Notice it's got this long alkyl chain that's going to be just like the alkyl chain of the substrate. And so that's going to fit into the enzyme active site. It's got this thiol ester group that's also just like the substrate. But what it also has in the um, gamma, in the beta gamma positions, and so those would be the positions there and there. The beta gamma positions have this carbon-carbon triple bond. And we're going to see that that's going to fool the enzyme to uh, perform some unique chemistry. What is that chemistry? Well, we're going to look at the enzyme active site with the same active site side chains. We'll follow the same steps. That's exactly what the enzyme is doing. It's thinking it's doing its normal chemistry. It's going to make that enol-like structure, and the geometry of the um, of the or the protonation state of the imidazole will be as the imidazolium cation. Uh, in the reverse step, the electron flow proceeds through that triple bond, and it picks up a proton to make a functional group that's known as an alene functional group. The alene functional group has the geometry shown here. You can actually find a reference either in Bruce or there's some other uh, references that I could point you to. But the alene has an sp hybridized carbon that's represented by that dot, and then two sp2 hybridized carbons on either side of it. So it's basically two double bonds that have um, jutted up or juxtaposed to one another. The imidazole is back to its uh, neutral state. and and so what happens next is um, basically we have a very good electrophile in the substrate. And that electrophile is going to capture the nucleophilic histidine imidazole ring. And so that's what happens next. Uh, that substrate turns around and serves as an electrophile to covalently capture that imidazole as the structure is shown here with a carbon-nitrogen bond. That's going to undergo tautomerization, so we can get rid of this enol kind of geometry and replace it with the more stable thioester form by moving that hydrogen. And now we've basically uh, completely shut down by an irreversible covalent binding of this substrate analog in 
to the imidazole that is the active site side chain. Because this process follows uh, the normal mechanism up until this point, the enzyme thinks it's doing the chemistry that it should be, but in fact it converts the substrate into an active form that eventually kills it, and so we consider this as a type of inhibitor that's known as a suicide inhibitor.